Great, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight for the virtual hearing of the Fall River Historical Commission. Uh, the hearing the hearing is being recorded and produced via Zoom. Uh, it is January, I'm sorry, uh, Wednesday, January 25th, 2023, and it is 6.01 p.m. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made whether perceived or unperceived by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Um, I will do a roll call now for the board. Um, Joyce Rodericks. Present. Uh, Elizabeth DeBlock. Present. Rick Manzini. Present via Zoom. And Jason Bouchard Naraki, present via Zoom. Uh, we are missing uh, Connie Soul tonight, and we have two vacant seats. Okay. And let's see. Um, item number three. Uh, so we, since it's the beginning of the year, um, or our first meeting for the year, we do have to do a annual election of officers for 2023. Um, it is indicated in the ordinance 38-35 uh, item F. The historical commission shall annually elect a chairman, a vice chairman and a secretary and file such notice um, and file notice of such election with the office of the city clerk. I nominate Jason Bouchard Naraki as chairperson. I'll second that motion. Okay, I have a motion by Rick and a second by Joyce uh, to nominate uh, myself, Jason Bouchard Naraki, for chair. I'm um, going to do a roll call vote. Joyce Rodericks. Uh, uh, I vote for, the, for that motion. Okay, uh, Elizabeth DeBlock. Yes. Rick Mancini? Yes. And Jason Bouchard Naraki? Yes. I think I could vote for myself. Okay, so um, next we have the vice chair. Uh, I nominate Rick Mancini to be the vice chair. I accept. I'll second that motion. Okay, so we have a Motion by my, uh, myself, Jason Bouchard Naraki, and a second by Joyce Rodericks for Rick as vice chair. Um, roll call vote. Joyce? I vote for that motion. Elizabeth DeBlock? Yes. And Rick Mancini? Yes. And Jason Bouchard Naraki? Yes. Okay. Um, and next, we have to elect a secretary. I nominate. Elizabeth de Block, <clears throat> secretary. And I second that motion. I'll second that motion. Okay. Um, I got to a first, uh, Joyce. So, um, all right. So I have a motion uh, by Rick and uh, second by myself uh, for electing Elizabeth as secretary for the 2023 calendar year. Um, I'm going to do a roll call vote, Joyce. Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. <laughs> uh, Rick? Yes. And Jason Bouchard and Rocky, yes. Okay, so we are set for that. I will let the city clerk's office know. Um, all right, so item number 4A uh, review and approve the minutes from December 29th, 2022. I sent those around. All right, I reviewed the minutes and I make a motion that we approve the minutes of the last meeting, December 29th of 2022. Okay. And I'll, uh, I'll second that motion to approve the minutes. Um, get a roll call vote to approve the minutes from December 29th, 2022. Uh, Joyce? Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. Rick? Yes. And Jason Bouchard Naraki, yes. Okay. Uh, do we have any citizens uh, citizens input tonight? No, I have no inputs. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, so we did receive some correspondence. Um, 
Item 6A, uh, we have a request for continued letters of support uh, regarding the Massachusetts Historical Commission tax credit applications uh, by Ryan LLC um, on a number of properties. Uh, and we do have Emily uh, Dominijani. Did I pronounce that right? I'm sorry. Uh, Dominiani. Domeniani. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, so Emily is here from Ryan LLC to discuss um, uh, the following properties. So we, the first one on the list was the Adams House at 1168 Highland Avenue. And I did uh, send all the backup information around. Um, so um, as we go down the list, Emily, um, do you mind um, We'll have to take a vote on the continued letters, but um, if there's any updates for each property. Sure. Um, there, there isn't really an update on the Adams house okay. at this time. All right. I think what the- is, Oops. Yeah, I was just going to, what does that mean, uh, Emily? There are no updates on the property. Uh, it's, I mean, it's, mostly done and it's just trying to receive additional funding before they finalize um, the project, which I believe this may be the last round they're applying for funds for. All right, what does is, what is mostly done mean? There, it's, I mean, all the tenants are in, it's similar to, to last round. Um, all the tenants are in, there was just one area, the fitness center that hadn't been finished. And what area was that? The fitness area. Okay. And that's still a work in progress? Yeah. So this, so the project, the project is largely completed and this is just the final installment of the the tax credits that they're seeking? Yes. Okay. Emily, what, what's your position uh, with the uh, Adams House? We are the historic consultants. So you have nothing to do with the construction or building, you do historic, I, give, give me an explanation of your yes. duties. So our office wrote the National Register nomination for the property, and we filed the part one and two applications, state and federal. And we will file the final part three application, which shows the finished work. All right. I, if I remember correctly, uh, it might have been in December, uh, November meeting, I think we spoke to you where we suggested strongly that mm -hmm. someone from these, maybe an architect or the, the uh, building contractor or owners uh, were present to tell us about the buildings. Um, you know, I, I, I just, I don't know. When I, when I hear Adam's house is almost done, you're, you're only in the history historic, you, you write the grants. Uh, we'd like to know what the building's status of the buildings are or, or properties are so that we can have a, a flavor for, yes, uh, does, should the next round of funding be approved or should it not? Uh, do, am I correct in that statement that we talked to you uh, last? meeting Oof. yeah we had discussed that i didn't know that you wanted me specifically to reach out to um the the architects um so in the future for the next meeting i can definitely make sure that happens um the reason i'm here is that we file the state uh we file the state applications every every uh, sorry, not every quarter, three times a year um, since we facilitate that process. I'm the person who makes sure we have all the components and one of those components is the support letter from your commission.
and so they and the, some of the projects they, they they do i don't want to say drag out but they um especially if construction's not in process yet um but they still need the letters of support in order to once that package is done um they can when the project is done they can get their tax credits afterwards yeah because the program is so competitive and each project is only allocated a small amount of money every round it really takes quite a long time to reach the maximum 20 percent that they're eligible for which is why some projects are structured in a way that prolongs them in order to get the funding because it is important to making the project financially viable. Okay. So in the case of the Adams House, the construction's done, the um, tenants are in. Um, it's just this last package, the, fi the final round for this particular project is, is needed. So it's just a letter of support from us to finalize that project. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, does that? No, the, pro the project's Sorry. not finalized because if the once we file the part three, mm -hmm. they can no longer apply for money from the state. Okay. And this letter supports for part three. It's for the state application. Okay. So it's technically part of more the part two. Okay. But would the project not have to, wouldn't the project have to be completed if you're going to file for the last, last uh, payment or last, uh, uh, the, the, I guess the payment, wouldn't, wouldn't you have to have a completed project? Yeah, we'll, ha we'll have to have a completed project for when we submit, which will be after April when we receive the next round of awards. Okay, but, but I, I guess I'm totally I'm totally confused. The, the project is nearing completion, but it's not completed. What I'm hearing, but you want a letter of support so that you can finalize the uh, funds, but yet the project won't be completed till probably April. Why are you here tonight looking we for a letter of support for the final payment? It's not for this letter of support is for the state allocation process. So three times a year, the Massachusetts Historical Commission allows developers to apply for a limited pool of money from the state. So they roll out the allocations three times a year, every year. So every deadline, one of the, the, we have different pieces we need to submit with the application. There's signed cover forms, showing that you're in compliance with the Department of Unemployment, um, a budget, a letter of support from Preservation Massachusetts. And then we receive local support letters from every historical commission for every project that we have. As a, and it's a requirement. So if we, if we don't get a local support letter from a commission, a, the project won't get money. Understand. Um, I, yes, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, but the, okay. So I, I guess I'm just not, I guess I'm not really, uh, project is done, but it's not completed, but this, so, but is this the final round of money? Is that what you're saying? Is, is that what you're looking for? No, you're looking for the final round or is it just the standard percentage that you're going for today? Um, so I, this will be the last time that the Adams House is applying for state funding. 
and they don't receive the funds until the project is 100% completed. Yeah, and then we get a, a certificate right. from the state. So once so once all the costs, uh, Rick, once all the costs of the project are certified and um, they have their their three parts submitted, then that's when they receive funding back from the, the tax credits. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's going to be the case with all of these, um, especially those that have not started. Um, you know, looking down the line, some of the projects have not even started yet, um, so they're just securing their place almost like in line i guess um for the tax credits because it is competitive um so is that does that help answer any any questions that you have Rick, on that yeah i i hear what you're saying i i'm i guess i guess i'm still kind of hung up on having someone from the organization represent themselves here in, at these committee meetings this is something we established Right. Uh, a while back and, and I and I noticed that Emily it, it wasn't done again this this go around uh, and yes Adam's house looks good I, I it seems to be a hundred percent rented from people that I've heard from in in the facility say that there's no vacancies so um, you know and, and I have I have actually two people in there that I know very well and, and they like it it's done it's, it's well 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 done they please. So I, I, I guess inside I have to say to myself, all right, it is complete. We should just uh, approve it. Uh, I'm just a little concerned when we, because not all of these listed here are going to fall in that category. Uh, and, it's, and, and we've sort of established a while back that people who are presenting sh should be here to present, right? uh, either send their architect or their engineer or their their contractor or the, the individual uh, property owner themselves someone in that area should be present when when these presentations are made uh, it's if it's you know it's important to get this money and and uh, it should be important enough that a presentation is made to this board that's comprehensive you know, not not loosely uh, conveyed. Okay. Well, in the future, if you can just outline exactly what you want from us, then we'll definitely make it happen for you. Yeah. Um, and so we initially, when um, the owners of the Adams House came before the Historic Commission, uh, I don't, I can't remember when that was. We, you know, we did review the project, and we do, we did know that they were going to be going after historic tax credits. So I think I. I guess we should expect when we have these requests that we should see you, somebody from whether it's Ryan LLC or another preservation consultant, um, that we should expect to see them, somebody from that organization, uh, because they're the ones needing the letter for, uh, of support. It's not the owner, it's not the engineer, it's the preservation consultants that are facilitating the administration of the tax credits, so we should expect to see them you know, more than more than once. We'll see them, you know, every funding round, basically three times a year, or how, however long as the project's going. Um, okay. Do we right. have any? Other no further questions on the Adams House. Okay. Um, do we have any other questions, Joyce or Liz, for a letter of support? No. Them? Okay. No. Uh, well, I, I'll vote. I'll uh, support a motion to um, support the letter of support. I'll second the motion. All right. So I have a motion by Joyce and a second by Liz. Uh, roll call vote. Joyce? Yes. Um, Elizabeth? Yes. Rick? I'm 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 torn between voting present or yes, but I, I'm I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt on this, uh, Emily, and I'll vote yes. And Jason Bouchard Naraki, yes, and that's for a letter of support on the Adams House uh, for their tax credits. Um, the next item is the ILGWU building at 38 to 48 Third Street. 
<clears throat> an update for this one is just that construction is underway. Mm -hmm. They are essentially done with the exterior, just a few final items there. Some of the, a couple of the windows and then, um, you know, painting and final touch ups there. The interior is being framed. They're working on plumbing and electrical, and it's targeting to be done May 1st to June 1st. Okay. Um, first tenants moving in May. And um, the owner also offered if anyone ever wants to go toward that building, you are welcome. Okay. Thank you. Uh, how would we do that? How do we go about getting a tour? Who would we have to contact, Emily? Uh, you could either contact me and I can put you in touch with Tony Cordero, the owner. Um, or if you have his information, I'm sure to reach out to him directly. Okay, is that is that the method that he wishes us to use to call him directly? Um, he didn't specify that, but I think I have his um, his email address, so we can whoever from the commission's interested in looking and getting a tour, we can coordinate that. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Thank you. Welcome. Um, there are any questions on? Thank you, Emily, for that one. Um, uh, any questions on the ILGWU building? No. No, I have none. This again is not a final. Payment. This is just another, just one of the steps towards, you know, one of a number of uh, requests for funding for this building. It's nowhere near the completion. Okay. Mm -hmm. Different situation. Do we have um, for a letter I'll of support? I'll make a motion to uh, to support the letter of support for the ILGW building. Thank you, Joyce. I'll second the motion. All right. All right. I have a motion by Joyce and a second by Liz on uh, item 6A-2 um, for letter support for the ILGWU building. Uh, roll call vote. Joyce? Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. Rick? Yes. And Jason? Yes. Uh, okay. Um, the next is item 6A-3, the Lincoln School. Okay. So this building actually has met its maximum state allocation for its current pro forma. So we do not need to reapply and I, we don't need a letter of support from you oh, at okay. this time. Um, I know that you've been curious about the ownership and nothing has been, nothing is final yet on that. Okay. Um, so I hope in the future, if this project um, continues, we will, you know, I know you want more information about it so we can get you what mm. you need on that. But yeah, there's no letter of support required for this this one okay not at that time no so okay. other steps have been taken so once the, so i'm assuming that once the construction mm -hmm. eventually begins and the project is completed then you have all the pieces needed that they can get the credits and, yeah. and there's new ownership coming on this property is that correct yeah there there is new ownership it hasn't transferred officially yet. okay mm -hmm. okay That's thanks it's encouraging because it's kind of sat idle for far too long. So thank you. Um, so, all right, we don't need to vote on that. Um, the next is 6A-4, the Notre Dame Rectory, uh, 529 Eastern Avenue. So this one, um, I did, I talked to the owner of this one today as well, and they're just, moving along with now they're trying to work through the mechanical drawings, um, which is just the next piece before construction can start. I saw that they did uh, receive approval from 
the zoning board uh, at their most recent hearing with conditions. I'm not sure what the conditions were, but um, to um, convert the building into apartments. I think there's a waiver on parking, which we don't we don't review. But um, the building uh, they did receive approval from the zoning board, so at least that's you know, things are in motion. Okay. Yeah, no, I have no questions. Okay. Uh, any other questions on that particular property? Okay. Um, can I get a motion for a letter of support? I'll make a motion to provide the letter of support. Okay. I'll second that motion. I have a motion by Liz and a second by Joyce. Uh, roll call vote. Joyce? Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. Rick? Yes. And Jason? Yes. For a letter of support on the Notre Dame Rectory. Um, next is the 6A-5 um, Sanford spinning at 206 Globe Mills Avenue. So this project, we just applied for the first time last round. Mm -hmm. We received, as is pretty standard, we received a long list of comments that we're addressing now. We applied for both the state and federal credits at the same time. So MHC reviewed the federal application and forwarded that to NPS. Mm -hmm. So both reviews are underway. Uh, we are working with the owner and architect to make okay. any changes necessary. Great, and NPS is the National Park Service. Correct. Perfect. Okay. Um, the last I, I had, I received an email from someone that was looking to do a land lease, so I think that might be off the table at this point. Um, and the owner's proceeding with the conversion to, I think, uh, residential. Yes. That just to address that, that was part of a power company that reached out to them about leasing the land. And as part of their due diligence, they um, reached out. All right. Um, it was right after we had voted for, uh, we had re reviewed the plans and um, the tax credits and so forth. And then they were talking about possibly knocking the building down. So obviously that was a red flag for us, but I'm glad to know that that's not happening. Yeah. Good. Um, are there any questions on Stanford spinning? No, there's really no progress going on at all there. It's just, it's just looking for, for funding at this point. Well, I guess you could say that there's no, construction hasn't started, so there's no progress mm -hmm. in that way, but the drawings are being, you know, more fully developed and sure. things like win window shop drawings are um, in the works. So there's definitely, there's a lot of, there's a lot going on. It's just not, the construction piece hasn't started. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. As as the historic commission, we we should certainly like to look at a few of the things on the outside of the building, in particular, uh, i.e., windows, things of that nature. We're going to have an opportunity to uh, see those drawings. Are they going to be supplied to us? Yeah, I can. We can send you a copy of anything like that if you want. I I, I would uh, I would entertain that. Yes. When do they anticipate uh, construction starting on that? Um, or is it too early in the, in the... I know, I mean, they're anxious to get it going, but there's probably still, I mean, optimistically the end of the year, but probably mm -hmm. not until next year. Okay. Yeah, it's really, it's good that the building is, as originally proposed, I, I, I believe uh, that Jason is correct. There was talk about knocking that down, demolition, and now it's going to be saved and it's going to be reused. That That is excellent. That's that's just, that's perfect. That's really nice, <laughs> heartwarming to hear that. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I would just like to look at, if possible, uh, the outside of the, you know, just a single drawing would be fine, showing the outside of the building and, and the, the, the uh, proposed window design, just so we can have an idea of what it's going to uh, end up looking. You know, it would be a shame to block up all the windows and put a little household window in there. So <laughs> I, I know that's not going to happen, but I'd, I'd certainly like to, to see what is happening. That would be great. Yeah. Thank you, Emily. Sure. Are you going to send that to uh, to Carrie in our uh, historic uh, department in the city hall? Is that where you send that, or are you going to send it to Jason? Or it'd probably be easiest to send it to Jason. Yeah. That's okay. okay. Yeah. When the plans are ready, um, I'd love to have a copy of that. We can share that with the board, and then I'm I'm sure we'll be seeing you again for. The next round on on that particular property. Yep. <laughs> with us with assistance from building owners or architects or engineers, correct? Yes. yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, any other questions on Sanford spinning? Sanford spinning. <laughs> no. Uh, can I get a motion for a letter of support? I'll make a a motion to support the Sanford spinning. Mills. I'll second that motion. All right. Motion by Rick and a second by Joyce. Um, roll call vote. Joyce? Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. Rick? Yes. And Jason? Yes. For a letter of support on the Sanford spinning. Okay. And last but not least is the Union Belt Company factory at 66 Troy Street. This is item 6A-6. So again, this project it's still in progress, but we decided to pull the state application for this round. So again, we don't need a letter of support. Oh. Um, it was uh, both of these because we didn't receive information from the state until the day of and the, a couple of days before the deadline. It was kind of a last minute decision, but we're moving forward with the National Park Service application mm. simply because we'll hear back sooner than if we have to wait three months for the next state round. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get through and get feedback quicker. Okay. All right, so no, no letters needed on this one. And is that, um, uh, I'm trying to remember. The, uh, it's part of the the complex that's right behind um, the Benjamin and Nathan building, the course block. I think mm -hmm. that we. Yep. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, I think that is it. So, um, great. Thank you very much. I'll send those letters of support uh, over to you um, by the end of the week, so you'll have that. Great. Um, one question for you. Do you have signage guide guidelines or um, requirements with your commission? Um, we have, depending on the on the building, we do have, uh, we have restrictions or gu uh, guidelines with buildings in the 40C district, uh, the local historic district that we have. Um, none of these buildings are in that. Uh, when it comes to the National Register, um, I don't, uh, I'll have to take a look, but I don't think we have um, any guidelines on signage. Um, the city, we did, our, our commission just recently approved um, design, design guidelines uh, for use across the city um, that it's more of a, a tool to use um, in particular for buildings in the 40C, um, but certainly building owners and homeowners that are not in the 40C can certainly use that tool. Um, we don't have the final copy yet. Um, that's still in process. Um, but um, unless the building has a, a um, what is it? Unless the building has a preservation restriction on it. Um, I know we've reviewed a few few buildings that do have that. Um, and these, these structures don't have um, deed restrictions on them. Okay, so. thanks. Um, I'll, I'll look into that then for All the right. future. Okay, thank you. Okay. Excellent. Emily, thank you so much for joining tonight.
Thank you. Thank you, night. Emily. <laughs> Thank you much. Bye. Bye. -bye. Um, the next item that we have uh, is item 6B. Uh, we have a request for letters of support uh, from the Fall River Department of Community Utilities um, for a Community Preservation Act funding application on uh, two projects, the North Watapa Pond Seawall Conditions Assessment and the Adirondack Farm Acquisition. Uh, we have Mike Labossier from the Community Utilities Department. And is Paul here as well? And Paul, yes, I Paul Perlin. Thank you so much. No problem. Uh, oh, um, yeah, regarding I, the uh, both of you are so well versed on on both of these, both the North Water Top of Pond Seawall Assessment and and um, uh, being on the CPC, I'm also able to read all of those documents and and I understand what you're doing. Uh, why don't you give the rest of the board, if you don't mind, a, a little breakdown, start from the bottom or the top and, and work down and let us know what you're doing, because it's it's impressive. Uh, the uh, Adirondack farm acquisition is uh, impressive. And uh, I, I think the North Wotepo uh, pond seawalls getting repaired is uh, another godsend for us. Uh, historically for this city. So if you guys could really uh, explain what's going on and get some details, if you like, make us uh, appreciate what you're doing. Yeah, well, thank you very much. I really do appreciate uh, those kind words. Uh, just for the board, myself, I'm Paul Furlan. I'm the Administrator of Community Utilities for Fall River. Uh, I oversee both water and sewer for the city of Fall River. Uh, Michael Borsia, <clears throat> Who's here as well as also our forester uh, working underneath the water department. Uh, he maintains and manages our over 4,500 4, acres of uh, protected land uh, on the other side of Fall River uh, that most people don't know about. Uh, that's in conjunction with uh, lands from Freetown, uh, Dartmouth, Westport uh, that make up the Southeastern Mass Bio Reserve area. Um, so just to start off with the Adirondack Farm, the Adirondack Farm is a uh, historical farm that is located off Blossom Road. Uh, what we have uh, planning to do with that, originally when the bio reserve uh, was over 20 years ago, uh, there was a, uh, an idea to have a bio reserve discovery center or a uh, educational center somewhere where uh, school people would be able to go uh, to learn about the environment and uh, the watershed, the watershed protection that we do, as well as uh, be able to use it as a uh, most welcoming center or an, uh, a educational fit area that people uh, could come on weekends or uh, afternoons to be able to learn about what we have uh, within the bio reserve. Uh, that's what our plan is for Adirondack Farm. So overall, we would like to acquire this uh, property. Uh, it's just over nine acres uh, of land. Uh, there's currently a farmhouse, uh, a barn, and then a couple of other outstructures of the property. Uh, it goes in... Uh, borders the North Wetupper Pond uh, as well. It's a little bit short of the North Wetupper Pond, but uh, Power Company owns the land right, of, right along the pond and it borders that and goes all the way down to the North Wetupper. Uh, it's one of, uh, one of the last privately owned pieces that come that close to the uh, North Wetupper Pond. Uh, so what we'd like to do with some of our partners is to develop this into that educational center so that we'd be able to have the community uh, be able to use this. Uh, so again, our application is into CPC and uh, we need the, uh, the board support. Uh, we have had it in the past and we'd be hoping that you'd be looking to uh, do it in the future. I think Mike can probably talk a little bit about the different partners that we have out there uh, and what we expect to, uh, to do with the, with the property. Well, thank you, Paul. Thank you. Um... Uh, and thank you, Commission. Um, it's a really exciting project in the fact that it's the last 
working farm in Fall River. It's a historic farm that goes back to at least 1850, and we have really good documentation on that. Um, part of the documentation comes from a, a rural, historic rural cemetery that exists on the property um, that we recently finished uh, working with uh, a PAL, um, Public Archaeological Labs, uh, to file. I think it's a Form E with the Mass Historical Commission. So there, there is a few heads, um, there's a few visible headstones. There may be as many as 13 people interred there. So that's, but that's a that's a very small piece of the whole puzzle. Um, it's it's. It's, it's not just historic in name, there's just, just lots of landscape, cultural landscape features that, um, that really gives a visitor a sense of the authentic sort of 19th century feel of this part of Fall River, which was really agriculture. Despite, despite the industrial um, happenings in the city, um, this was in some ways the food basket for, uh, for the city uh, during those, um, you know, during those years of um, industrial, um, busyness. So, you know, stone walls, the stone walls are still intact. The farmhouse is, um, is, uh, is, it's an old farmhouse. It's got a lot of authentic bones to it. It's our intention to really, um, you know, honor that history, um, you know, from, from the outside, it'll, will certainly, um, you know, keep it in, in, in the period look on the inside. The idea is to create some classroom space, some community, uh, uh, gathering space, uh, some exhibit space, and, and some kind of a visitor's uh, initial contact area where people who are coming out to the bioreserve, whether they be, you know, local residents or, uh, you know, visitors from afar, which we are getting more and more of that from, you know, as far as Cape, Boston, Providence, um, when you have so many thousands of acres open to public uh, use, uh, we're really attracting a lot of visitors. So, this will be that place. This will be a place where, uh, um, you know, we'll be able to use it for school, uh, um, you, know, you know, school programs, uh, adult education. Um, we've got partnerships lined up with Diamond, um, culinary farm to table kind of uh, flavor, as well as uh, BCC's got a sustainable agricultural program. We've been talking to them. So it can be, uh, it's gonna have a lot of different purposes. Seven acres is strictly conservation land. It'll be protected with a conservation restriction. Um, the other couple of acres will have to do with the, you know, the, the infrastructure, the, uh, uh, the center itself, parking, things like that. Um, but it's the family that owns it right now have owned it and taken care of it for 40 years. They've got a great sense of stewardship. They, they're, they're ready to pass the baton and um, they were very compelled at our vision for the property. And I think we're gonna really uh, create something that's gonna, that's gonna really have enduring value for the city. Great, great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for that description. So just one, one thing I wanna say, I know it's not under the commissions, but just to let the commission know and anybody else that's, that's out there listening. Currently, our funding plan uh, involves multiple multiple different sources, CPC being uh, one of those sources. Uh, we also have uh, brought in Bristol County APA funds that have been approved uh, for use at the site. Uh, we've also applied and been granted a land grant, L-A-N-D uh, grant from the state. Uh, and there also has been a state AMOC that has been allocated towards this project uh, that was submitted by uh, Rep. Carol Fiola, uh, supported by the rest of the, uh, the reps. So, well, I uh, don't want to jump the gun, but uh, I would uh, make a motion that we write a letter of support for the Adirondack farm acquisition. I'll second that motion. I have a motion uh, by Rick and a second by Joyce. Uh, roll call vote, Joyce? Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. Rick? Yes. And Jason, yes. Uh, and that's for a letter of support for the um, Adirondack Farm acquisition. Um, we're jumping around. That was uh, the second item on the list. Uh, the first item on that was the What's Up Upon Seawall Conditions Report. All right, sorry. Sorry, I went to that one first. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the Northwood Cup of Pond seawalls, these are uh, seawalls that are in strategic points around the pond. Uh, they were constructed uh, in the late 1800s, early 1900s for uh, protection of the pond. Uh, these are areas that uh, may uh, see increased wave action, 
or uh, uh, other erosion issues. Uh, one of the reasons that they were really built was protection of the, of the water supply to the North Wetupper Pond. Uh, but it, they also add a, a great historic uh, uh, feature to, to those particular areas. Uh, these walls can be viewed uh, on the side of 195 um, on the North Wetupper Pond. Uh, we also have them uh, down next to our 1873 pump station. Uh, at the bottom of Bedford Street, uh, but they're also up by the causeway. There's a couple of different uh, sections uh, up by what we call the causeway, which is actually uh, Wilson Road as you uh, come from Rickett Back Road and head in towards the uh, reservation or the bio reserve. Uh, Mike, I think you give probably a little bit of history uh, on the walls and uh, kind of what we're looking to plan to do with uh, the funding from CPC. Yeah, thank you, Paul. Um, really, that's um, we, you know, when we inherit, we, I, I guess, on, on our shift here with, with the department, we've kind of inherited these walls. They didn't come with an owner's manual. So, um, but I think the best we can speculate, I know a couple of photographs that we've used in the report and in other, um, uh, you know, uses uh, have come from the uh, Frederick Law Olmstead uh, historical site. Uh, I know that the, I know that. You know, there's there's certainly you know a handful of uh, Olmstead features in the city. Um, these I don't necessarily you know lay claim that that he 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 necessarily designed these, but I know the firm did look at it. We've seen some correspondence, and and they did look at it. They did advise the water whatever it was the commission at the time or uh, what's up or, um, the, the reservoir commission uh, as to um, uh, you know how they might go about uh, you know you know um, uh, building these walls um so but i mean when you look at them especially the ones close uh, at the end of bedford street they're they're really well well built well designed there's uh you know just beautiful quarried capstones there's some stairways there's um just a lot of um uh they went to some great lengths to to, to show some civic pride not just to build walls to you know to to uh uh, you know, to protect the land and fight the tides. Um, there is, a, there is a, a retaining wall on the causeway that leads to interlocking, which isn't very readily seen. But it, And then, of course, the one mo most people are familiar with is the ones that they can see along Wilson Road. And that's, uh, that's probably the longest one. And um, they've lasted over 100 years, but they get beat. I mean, when you see the, nor you know, the Nor'easters come through, um, you know, they get beat from one side and then, you know, sometimes we, we get the predominant southwesterlies and they get beat another way. Um, and I've been on the causeway when the, when when I feel like I'm at the breakers in Newport with waves <laughs> coming over the edge. So, so the energy that's really been, you know, smacking at them and undermining and this and that. Um, we've got to we've got to really get an, uh, an architect and an engineer in there to study, uh, you know, realistically assess what's what what's the state, what's the current condition. Uh, what, what kind of steps we can make to uh, um, to do some repairs and uh, prepare for the next hundred years, particularly with the uh, attention to you know climate change and uh, you know increasing severity of storms, um, we can't do this fast enough. So uh, we appreciate your support for Adirondack as well as for this one. I, th I think it just happens that our department has their hands on a lot of important. <laughs> legacy landscapes for the city and i'm really happy that we can uh, take the opportunity to uh try to fortify and uh and uh you know um you know make improvements and and, and keep them lasting thank you mike and, and paul uh yeah and I, echoing the the importance of um uh the legacy projects we have uh you know almost a consulted not just for parks and civic spaces they also provided engineering uh, assistance uh, or uh, technical support for things like the retaining wall and um, after uh, Olmsted uh, died in the early 1900s his sons took over uh, and took over the, the the practice and that's when we got North Park um, which was after after uh, Frederick Law Olmsted's death and um, even the expansion of uh, what was South Park now Kennedy Park um, and um, if for the board, um, if you haven't gone on to the Olmsted's historic site on their, onto the web page, they have all of their um, resources, most of them scanned and digitized. And it's really fascinating to see the, their files on projects in Fall River. Um, but no, this is a very important project. And 
Um, so with that, I'll let the board, any other questions that we have on? Yeah, Mike, um, obviously these walls are granite. Do you know how they were quarried, uh, where they might have come from if it was Beatty or uh, what granite yards in Fall River produced the granite? So the easy answer is no, I don't. However, I, I, I can make an educated guess at something. Um, the 1873 Waterworks building that Paul referred to, um, their specs was to find the granite right where you were, uh, you know, right on the site. And um, there's loads of evidence of surface quarrying uh, at the bottom of Bedford Street on both sides of um, Bedford Street, you know, in the vicinity of the, of the waterworks. So it wouldn't surprise me um, if, you know, that might have contributed toward the source. Um, I know there are, you know, many other um, sites for granted in the city, but um, I, we don't have any record of, of, of that specifically. Uh, other thought too is, um, don't forget there was a quarry in uh, a sonnet, which people call the sonnet ledge. Uh, and I don't know, I've, I've speculated, I and looked at some old maps, like when, when was this, when was the Wilson Road causeway built? And did it possibly have anything to do with accessing the Asonet Ledge to bring granite in from, uh, from there into the city? So um, maybe that's another grant in the future to figure that all out. But for <laughs> now, we're gonna just try to address the walls. That's a good question. You know, it's very strange you talk about that. I, I grew up on the end of New Boston Road near Meridian Street. Right. And uh, on the south side of, I grew up on the south side of New Boston Road in that development that was the old orchard, apple orchard. Uh, well, I'm going back a number of years now. I'm going back to the late 40s, early 50s. But there was a ledge there that the farmer, uh, Manuel Nunes, uh, owned. And he actually owned from the cemetery originally, Oak Grove, uh, the um, Oak Grove Cemetery, right down to the pond. He owned the strip and the, the highway came in and took some of that and uh, cemetery took a bit and you know it, it was all broken up but the point i'm getting at is there was a large large ledge right there that uh i was still a young man and that ledge had not been completely filled in nooms was filling it in over the years but that could be another area where that quarry uh stone came from you know, it, it would it would be right near the interlock, and I mean, this you're talking, you know, what are you talking? A, a thousand feet, fifteen hundred feet from the interlock, and so it it, it uh, it's another area to research if we could. <laughs> we can't, but it would be nice if there was documentation. Well, maybe we'll sick Bill Gonsalo on it. He's he's done some good research on the quarry mm -hmm. locations. Okay, <laughs> good. Uh, any other questions uh, for the what top of North what top upon seawall? No, uh, but I'll make a motion that uh, we approve uh, a letter of support to get the architectural and and design work done for that particular wall. And I'll second that motion. All right, I have a motion by Rick and a second by Joyce. Uh, roll call vote. Joyce. Yes. Elizabeth. Yes. Rick. Yes. And Jason, yes, for the letter of support for the seawall conditions assessment. Um, I will have these letters to you also by the end of the week. So thank you very much for taking the time to meet with us tonight. Very, very exciting. Great, 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 explanation. Your interest in great explanation. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Have good a good um, The next item that we have um, was actually for letter of support regarding a tax credit application uh, for um, Saga Mill, more, uh, mill number three, uh, item 6C. Uh, unfortunately, they cannot make it tonight, so this will likely be um, added to February's agenda. Um, so that will be moved. Um, let's see. Um, item seven, old business. I would, I'd just like to comment on that. I was impressed with the 196 page document. Oh, my God. They was supplied to us. <laughs> That, my goodness. I, well, I, I actually, I was, I got so wrapped up in it. Uh, I can tell you, I, I 
got on and my wife said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to go upstairs. I, I want to read up on a document. You know, two hours later, she pops up and she says, what are you doing? I had to quit. I had spent two hours researching and going through. It was, uh, it, it's really an amazing document. It, the amount of work. It's a big mill. In. I think that is the largest, that building I believe is the largest single mill structure in the city, I believe. I'm almost positive, but um, so yeah, it's it is a very big building. So, but the detail in the in the uh, proposal and the detail in the uh, uh, scope of work and how it's to be accomplished, that particular engineering design firm uh, is did a great job historically to maintain the integrity of that that mill. Yeah. We'll um we'll have to we'll we'll be able to discuss it as a board um next uh, I assume next month when mm -hmm. if they're able to join next month, um so um yeah I don't they're not going for from what I understand they're not going for the first round which was it's due it was due um they're going for the next uh the next opening which will be I think in April so they're they're ahead ahead of the ahead of the cure of good yes so um. So old business item 7A, um, this is just an update on the open meeting law training uh, by the members of the historical commission. Uh, this is in regards to the open meeting law complaint, complaints from November 17th of 2022 and December 15th of 2022. Um, I, um, so I have done my training um, and I believe I got Liz and Joyce, I got your Right. Rick, did you do your training yet? I, I did. I did the training on Tuesday evening. Okay. So um, I have not gotten my report back from the right. government yet, but it, they said it'll be in Wednesday or Thursday, supposedly. If not, I'll call Friday. Okay, perfect. And um, I, I'll i check in with, with uh, Connie. I don't know. I don't think I haven't received anything from her, but I'll check with her. Um, so I did send over some additional dates if people can, uh, couldn't get it done. The, it looks like they're only doing it twice a month, um, one in the middle of the day, one in the evening. Um, but um, as long as we've all gotten it, and I believe Connie probably has already gotten it, so I'll double check with her. Okay. Perfect. Um, uh, item 7B, update on, the, update on the final copies of the design guidelines. So I reached out to... Uh, Dominique uh, Hawkins to find out what was going on with that. And there's a, a little um, snafu, I guess, uh, pay with the, the final payment from the government center, from um, the treasurer's office. Um, so I reached out to Ian, um, can't remember his last name, I'm sorry, uh, with the treasurer's department. Um, and just to follow up to see where we were at with that. So it does look like that all payment has been submitted. Um, whether or not the checks have been actually cut uh, or the final check has been cut, I'm not 100% sure. But uh, Dominique said that she it's it's ready to go. So once once that she has her final payment, she will hit the send button and get that over to us. So um, I know Jim Jim Sewell has been actively trying to get that that mm -hmm. building fast because. We we approved that what two three months ago, at this point. so yeah. Um, it's, it's been in the stovepipe now for what two years? A long time, a very long time. Um, so yeah, we'll have that. I hope I hope that's <laughs> rectified within the next month, so we'll be able to have a final copy by the next meeting. Um, so that's what I have on that. Um, and then uh, open discussion. Um, I did have um, I, uh, an inquiry yesterday from a gentleman who is working for TPG, um, which I believe is, uh, or, is or is it TPC? It's the Prakashanti company. Um, so they're, um, and it, it's, uh, it's rather interesting. So um, we have on buildings across the city, if they're on the registry, they have a six month demolition delay. Um, and I think just just to you know, cross the T's and dot the I's, um, the building department will any demolition permit that comes in, uh, they 
usually contact me and I will cross reference the, the registry to make sure it's not. And if it's not on there, I will submit a letter just indicating that it's not on the registry. Um, and so this particular property, it was the, um, uh, the former Rite Aid on the corner of William Canning Boulevard and Tucker, I think it is. Oh, it's, not, yeah. it's not old. <laughs> it's maybe what built in the nineties. I don't know. Um, but I, I thought that was rather, you know, they, I don't think they have the, the copy of the the list in front of them and they're not cross cross referencing the list, but um, you know, that was a, an easy, yes, that can, that can be, you know, torn down. Um, you know, there's no, there's no, restrictions on it but um i just thought that i had to laugh when i got the request because you know, it's a standard strip mall building so <laughs> um i don't have anything else really to discuss um any open discussions on anything um the, uh, the you know as as we're all assigned a uh, to be a representative of some board just to make sure things are not, I guess, not needed in the historic section uh, of the city or, or historically compromising, you know, anything. Uh, but the park board has not had anything uh, in their last, actually the last two meetings. Mm -hmm. So that's been good. Uh, so that's great. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you're aware, I was, you're, you all here, members were gracious enough to appoint me to the CPC and, and the mayor then sent it to the city council. That was all done. I attended the first meeting uh, last week uh, and it, this is into that busy cycle. So when I tell you that um, we've got uh, four meetings just the rest of this month and February, there were four meetings. So uh, it's a very active board. Uh, it's it's uh, very thorough in questioning and things of that nature. So they they really uh, they really make sure that the monies are being well spent. I was very impressed with uh, with the way it was operated. And uh, again, I thank you, fellow commissioners, for uh, appointing me and allowing me to take this this particular position. Thank you. It's our pleasure. Thank you, Rick, for for representing the historical commission. It, it, it is such a very good program. Um, you know, unfortunately it's not used to its full, um, uh, you know, benefit, I guess, but um, you know, it's, it's such a great asset to have in Fall River, especially when we have a lot of, you know, buildings that have gone through a series of, uh, you know, just, I don't want to say neglect, but um, deferred maintenance. Um, and you know, as the structures get older, you know, great, great example is the the gates over at um, Oak Grove Cemetery. That was such a fantastic project, and um, and then the uh, the gatehouse to the old burial uh, or burial ground. Oh, that's burial ground. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's such a fantastic. It looks great. You know, I wish the building was being used, but you know, at least it's set up. They can. That's you know what's really nice also is that preservation restrictions, the minute any yes. money is allocated to any of these properties or any of these endeavors, mm -hmm. uh, and that in itself just locks it into maintaining the historic culture and nature. So that, that's very impressive in itself. And how important it is to have those restrictions. We've learned that the hard way, um, especially, you know, knowing what buildings have them and what buildings don't have them. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know, it, it's you need that uh, because uh, especially with some properties, they might just change hands so frequently that, you know, like a mill building then kind of gets lost in the shuffle, but it prevents insensitive design from occurring on buildings that have stood for centuries. Um, and, and, and then I might add that uh, the historic commission uh, there was a gentleman, Al Lemer. Most people are familiar with Al Lemer in the city, uh, a very honorable person who did a lot of good volunteer work and a lot of good things for the city, uh, including the Al Lemer uh, Trail uh, over there. Uh, and he was looking for some funding. We went through the Historic Commission. I, I actually made the presentation uh, to CPC. CPC at that point awarded the present awarded the amount of money. Unfortunately, Al got ill 
uh, and passed away. And it's been sitting there for a year, a year and a half. After two years, that money goes back to CPC and is not used. And what it was used for is to do form Bs of the Steep Brook area and all of the land, I guess call it east of the water up of pond or that area. And there's almost 60% of Fall River is, is from the center of the North Water Upper Pond and running east. That, that 60% of the, of the land is, is there. So Fall River itself, as we know, the city is, is only roughly 40%. But anyway, there are no form Bs, which very briefly what it means. And I'm doing this more for the general public, not for us because we're, we're informed. But what it does is it establishes history for that particular property and and it, they go back as far as possible and what you get is a complete writ, written history of that particular property uh, along with the, the exact location uh, the photographs old photographs to, that they can be uh, uh, found and developed and the latest uh, photographs so you get a really good composition of what the property is and what it was and if if you if you look back and you and you look at the steep brook which is the original fall river that's when it was a little town before it was a town and it was still associated with the sonnet our first city hall was down there uh and it is actually got the oldest building in the city is is on north main street in that area so there is no history written down. The, the, the form Bs that were developed a number of years ago are very, very old and, and, and antiquated. And I don't think it captured the whole area. So uh, I guess what I'm getting to is I've I, uh, made some inquiries and I've spoken to a number of people. Uh, I, I won't go into all those details at this point, but I'd like to take that particular task and run with it. And uh, uh, again, I've spoken to a number of people and, and within a month, I should be able to get back to this board and give you a more updated discussion on what's occurring. But I hate to see that uh, project go to waste. Uh, it's something that Al Lima really wanted and it, it could be his last hurrah here uh, for the city. And, and uh, there are a number of people that are all willing to participate and get this thing rolling. So. Uh, I'll keep you abreast at the, the next meeting. I'll have more information, but I've spoken to uh, pretty much everyone that would be involved. And we've gotten a couple of uh, uh, organizations that uh, are interested or will would be probably put on the bid list. And the bidding, the RFPs would be handled by the planning department in the city of Fall River. That's, you know, that's, that's it looks like uh, we'll give it another month and, and we'll have more more uh, info more accurate info and that's that's good for us especially as uh, for our current board so we can see how that process rolls out because we you know ultimately if we want to have form these updated in other neighborhoods or if we want to consider expanding either a national register district or even uh, creating another local historic district, we'll have to have the form B's done. Um, and um, the Massachusetts Historical Commission has updated the forms in, in a way that they, they ask for more comprehensive research. Um, the forms that were done in the 80s when um, there was a survey done through the Mass Historical Commission, um, they weren't they weren't detailed enough. They were a very basic uh, level of info. Um, and uh, you know, now, especially with, you know, for example, registry of deeds, it's a, nearly 100% uh, digitized. So records like that are more accessible um, and you can get a more comprehensive look at the history and evolution of the building or its site. Um, you know, there's tons more research being done now. Um, so, you know, I, this is this is a great project at least it'll show us you know if we do any future work how that will roll out mm -hmm. uh, and especially for steep work too it is as you mentioned it is the the oldest section of the city um so i mean you're the research is more involved because you're going back you know decades more fall river is not terribly old but it's 
you know, it's going back further, further back. So. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Rick, for taking on this, this project. So okay. um, yeah. any other, anything else for open discussion at all? Yeah. All right. Um, so our next hearing is scheduled to be Tuesday, February 22nd, um, 2023 at 6 p.m. Um, so I will keep you updated. I believe we will probably be virtual that meeting. So once I have the the information it's the 21st, on the 21st, right? Not the 22nd. Correct. 22nd. I'm sorry. I thought it was the oh no, no, no it'll be Tuesday the 21st. Tuesday the 21st. Uh, our meetings are every third Tuesday of the month. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I was doubting myself. Um, okay, so we will likely be virtual that, but once I'll have the information, I'll pass that along. Um, so may I get a motion to adjourn the hearing tonight at 7, 11 p.m.? Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Okay. I'll second that motion. Great. Thank you. I have a motion from Liz and, or Elizabeth and a, a second by Joyce. Uh, roll call vote, Joyce. Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. Rick? Yes. And Jason Bouchard Naraki, yes, uh, to adjourn the hearing. It's so thank you so much for good meeting tonight. So <laughs> thank you very okay. much. Th thank you. Have a good night. Congratulations on Elizabeth <laughs> on your appointment and Jason on yours. Thank you. And you too, Rick. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yes. Have a good I'll night. Much. Stay out of the rain. Yeah. <laughs>